It seemed like overnight that Tracy Chapman went from singing on the streets of Harvard Square to winning three Grammy Awards in 1989. Her debut album sold more than 10 million copies. Critics have called her one of the most socially relevant songwriters of our time. After a couple of years of laying low, she is back in the spotlight with a new release, New Beginning. And I am pleased to have her on this broadcast. Welcome. Thank you very much. Oh. It is a new beginning for you, is it? Yes, it is. How so? In many ways. I uh, took a different approach to making this record than I had in the past. I uh, decided that I would put my own band together and record with those musicians as well as tour with them. And uh, we spent a lot of time rehearsing, toured before we went into the studio, and then we made the record. And in the past, I'd always gone in with studio musicians and made the record and then tried to assemble a band after the fact. So that was uh, a way in which I took uh, you know, a little more control over um, that aspect of you know, my professional life, and that was something new for me. And also, so many of the songs on this record relate to the um, idea that we all have an opportunity to recreate our lives and to recreate this world, hopefully in a better shape and form. Did the fact that you toured first before going into the studio make a difference in the sound? It did, because we had an opportunity to uh, basically test the songs out in front of an audience and that's something that I used to do in the past when I played in folk clubs and on the street in Boston and uh, I'd stopped doing that once I you know made my first record and started touring so it was kind of coming back to an, an old old um, style and uh, it, it it changed the dynamics of the songs it didn't change the um, actual content of lyrics or anything like that but it definitely made a difference in the way that we arranged and produced the songs. What was your mindset coming back to, or coming to New Beginnings? I mean, where were you in your head? <laughs> and do you know? <laughs> well, I was at a place where, um, you know, I, I actually felt like I had enough of the music business. <laughs> I mean, serious? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> After I, I, Grammy Awards, you say? Well, you know, it was wonderful to have the success of the first record, and it created so many opportunities for me, and it, you know, made my life better on a material level. So, you know, all that was really great. But um, it was also um, kind of stressful for a person who likes to be pretty private, and um, you know, I, 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 I guess I also. I had an opportunity then to make the second and the third record, which in some people's minds didn't do as well uh, as the, the first record. And, um, you know, I, I just felt like I, I wanted to do something other than, um, <clears throat> you know, be in a business that sometimes doesn't really seem like it values the artistic side of, you know, the business. So. I was thinking, well, I have to make this record, so let me try and make the best record that I can and write the best songs that I can for this record and try to do it in a way that works for me as much as possible. So work with people um, who are really competent, but also people that I like. And I've, I've been fortunate in that um, I had a wonderful band for the record and for the tour. And my um, management company has been great. And, these are more upbeat than some things you've written. Yeah, I guess you could say that. I'm sorry, are you happy? Am I happy? I am. I'm actually very happy these days. Because you're doing what you like and you like this music and... Yeah, you know. that's definitely part of it. And uh, I think also just as you get older, you get a better sense of yourself and what it is you want and what you need to do in your life to yeah. make things happen. Yeah, and what's the right balance for you? Yeah, yeah. You live in San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. Tour how much? I toured a lot, actually, over the last two years, more than I have in the past. And um, I did that because uh, and I ended up working with people who I like being out on the road with, so it was finally comfortable for me. Um, but for the last two years, we've been on and off the road. Does writing come natural to you? It does. I, I, that doesn't mean it's not difficult, but uh, I've been writing songs since I was eight years old. 
you knew you wanted to be a musician then? I think I, I was a musician. It, you know, it wasn't about deciding that I, I would be. I was singing, I think, as soon as I could talk and uh, started playing guitar when I was eight as well. And I always knew that I would be making music. I didn't know that it would be my career and that I would have success in it. Where did you go to school? I went to Tufts University. Yeah. I mean, high school. Oh, I went to Worcester School. Yeah. In, in Can Connecticut? or? Yeah, in Danbury, Connecticut. I received yeah. a scholarship. And, and was that a, what was that like for you? It was a, a life-saving experience. Because? <laughs> because I uh, was in the Cleveland Public School System uh, before I, I had the opportunity to uh, go to this private boarding school. And uh, the, the school system was just, uh, you know, in shambles. It, it, the busing was going on, yeah. and racial tension was very high. Um, the teachers were underpaid, so they were striking most of the time. And, uh, you know, I, I was doing well in school, but um, I, I think at the time that I received the scholarship, um, you know, I, it was just perfect because I unfortunately, um, <clears throat> you know, was. You could not you could not be involved in some of the things that were going on, and I found myself uh, in the middle of a race riot um, when I was uh, about 14 years old, and uh, found someone pointing a gun at me, you know, and telling me to run or they'd shoot me. And uh, it was about that same time that I applied for the scholarship, and my mother wasn't sure she wanted to let me go because she thought I was too young to leave home, and I think that. Um, changed her mind. She decided that uh, it might Maybe actually be, it might be, better. be a good idea. And then I ended up going to the school and I had 60 people in my class, 12 people in most of my classrooms. And, you know, most of the classes in the Cleveland Public Schools were overcrowded. And, and what was the racial mix of Worcester? <laughs> I was one of about 20 students of color. One of, of, one of 20? So yeah, it, out of about a student body of 200. And most so of those that's 10%. Other, yeah, most of those other students were scholarship students like myself. Yeah. Well, it says something's good about the school reaching oh, out. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was a great school. Yeah, and then on to Tufts. Right. Always thinking music, music, music. Thinking music, but also uh, thinking veterinary medicine. I wanted to be a veterinarian. Dr. Chapman. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me talk about some of the titles here. First, let me talk about, give me one reason. 1988, yes? 1989. 1989. And who was it about? And what was it? <laughs> who was it about? Well, yeah. you know. It, Tell me. It's a, it, it's a courting song. Okay, I mean, that, so that's... who was it about? <laughs> <laughs> what, what are we talking about here? You know, we're just talking about someone What's saying... this person's name? <laughs> and what kind of relationship well, was this? Well, we need to protect the innocent. So... <laughs> <laughs> Protect the innocent. That's right. You know, it's just a song about. Well, is this uh, still a, 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 a okay? So, is this person no longer in your life? Oh no, they're they're still in my life. We're very good friends. Okay, good friends. That's right. Okay, roll tape. Here is <laughs> an earlier performance here on this set. Tracy Chapman, give me one reason. i 
was wonderful, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me talk about some of the other titles here. Uh, and when, uh, uh, Heaven's Here on Earth. Mm. You wrote that? I did. Yeah. I did. You believe that? I believe it's possible. I mean, that's what the song says at the, at the end, that, uh, you know, we have this world that supports and sustains us. It has everything that we need for life. And all we really need to do is care for it and it will continue to care for us. And, uh, and also I think we all have the, the possibility or the capacity within ourselves to treat each other better than we do. Uh, I think we think many things are out of our control, but, uh, but they're not. And I, I guess I, I, I know I'm here right now and I know I want to make the best of... Uh, on, this, on this planet. Right. right now. So I, I want to make the best of what yeah. I can of this life. Does, think back to when you were Tufts. How old are you now? I'm 32. Oh, and do you feel old? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and think back, you know, 10 years when you were leaving Tufts, right? Right. Uh, have, have your politics changed? Uh, only in the sense that I think I'm less idealistic than I was. At the time. Happens to all of us, doesn't it? <laughs> I guess so. Reality has a way <laughs> of uh, coming in. But uh, essentially, I'd say that my politics are, are the same. Really? Activists? Uh -oh. Yeah, and, and it's changed. I mean, when I was in college, I, I was uh, singing at the, that time and, and um, singing about the same kinds of things singing I sing in, about in now. Right. Yeah. But I was also you know, involved with sit ins and protests and marches. And, and today, which, what would you be protesting? <laughs> well, where, I don't know where to begin. I mean, of course, we could, you know, we were talking about this world, so uh, the state of the environment yeah, and environment. Uh, the people who abuse it. How about gender issues? Certainly, that's something to uh, still, you know, be dealt with. I mean, I, I, one of the songs on this record, New Beginning, talks about making a new language and new symbols to uh, talk about our world and uh, I think we still need to look at the fact that this constitution for this country does not include women you know and I, th I think that that's significant you know that our, our language uh, does influence the way we think about each other and about this world and uh, you know if we change it then to be more inclusive then we might live lives that are 
more inclusive as well. Change the Constitution. Oh, yeah, I think so. I think so, to say that all men and women... It's been amended women... before, but <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> this won't be the first time we've amended the Constitution. Right. Um, which song didn't you write? Uh, I wrote all the songs on, on this oh, All these CD, you wrote? Yes. Yeah. And which, your, which one means the most to you, other than Give Me One Reason? You know, they, they're all important to me, and usually what happens is the, the song that I've written recently is the song that is my favorite, yeah. and that's the song that's not on this record. <laughs> What's that? What's that song? Well, it's a song no one's heard either. Well, just tell me. It's a song called Unsung Psalm. Unsung Psalm. Psalm. Like P-S-A-L-M? That's right. Tracy Chapman, New Beginning. Great to have you here. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.